Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa arrived in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia to extend his condolences to His Royal Highness Prince Bandar bin Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud following the passing of his mother. His Royal Highness extended his heartfelt condolences to His Royal Highness Prince Bandar bin Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and his family, noting that his thoughts and prayers are with His Royal Highness Prince Bandar at this time. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Private Secretary to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday held his weekly Majlis at Rafah Palace. Members of the Royal Family, senior government officials, members of the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, members of Municipal Councils, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the Majlis. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince welcomed the broad range of visitors at the weekly Majlis which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment to rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty's aspirations to maintain a strong bond amongst Bahrain society. The Majlis visitors extended their appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for hosting the Majlis and emphasized the important role His Royal Highness plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity and opportunity for the people of Bahrain. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the Majlis.
Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa launched today at Ghadibiya Palace a project to enhance adaptation to climate variables of the water sector in Bahrain. In the presence of a number of ministers, officials and representatives of the United Nations Environment Office in West Asia. The Deputy Prime Minister affirmed that the Cabinet encourages all national initiatives implemented by ministries and government authorities in cooperation with UN and international organizations that will enhance water security and sustainability, which is a fundamental objective of the Cabinet. Sheikh Khalid noted that the project is one of the initiatives supervised by the Water Resources Council and expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for supporting the directive that aims to find innovative solutions in the fields of energy, water and environment to adopt environmentally friendly solutions and practices in various industrial sectors. He added that the project is in line with the climatic variables of the water sector in Bahrain and with the government's program in line with the national water strategy as the project is directly linked to three of the sustainable development goals. During the ceremony, the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he affirmed that Bahrain is the first country in the Gulf to benefit from the Green Climate Fund, adding that the partnership between the two sides will be an opportunity for the region to benefit from the projects of the fund. He also noted that the oil sector plays a major role in enhancing the water security and supply in Bahrain, given the challenges faced by this vital sector due to climate change. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi bin Abdullah Zainal, expressed appreciation and gratitude for meeting His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and submitting to His Majesty the annual report of the Representatives and Shura Councils for the first session of the fifth legislative term. She affirmed that the support the legislative authority receives from His Majesty the King is the main incentive to make further achievements for the interests of the country and its people, noting that the Representatives Council's achievements in exercising its legislative and supervisory role in the past legislative term were a result of the visions of His Majesty the King and an embodiment of the law and institution country established by His Majesty's reform project. She noted that the Council during the second session of the fifth legislative term will continue the march of serving the country and its citizens to achieve the royal vision. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to attend the inauguration of the first Bahrain Emergency Medicine Conference organized by Bahrain Medical Society. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah conveyed the appreciation of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the organizers and participants of the conference and his wishes for further success to them to achieve the objectives of the conference, including enhancing medical services, particularly emergency services. He affirmed his keen interest to cope with the recent development in the medical field according to international standards. He added that Bahrain owns the capabilities and expertise needed and always aims to develop its initiatives that aim to improve the quality of medical services. He said that the launching of the National Emergency Center is an important step to enhance these services due to its quick response to emergency cases. The president of Bahrain Medical Society, Dr. Ghada Al Qasim, extended her sincere gratitude to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his patronage of the unique conference that aims to highlight the importance of emergency medicine in the presence of excellent emergency doctors who are participating from various countries. The conference's president, Dr. Salah Al Ghanem, stressed the importance of this conference to exchange expertise, information, and research through lectures and discussion sessions. The closing ceremony of the first round of the Mish'al bin Hamad al Saleh annual prize for the memorization of the Holy Quran has been held under the patronage of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Rashid al Khalifa. The prize uh, was organized by the Abi bin Kab Center for Teaching the Holy Quran at the Ahmad al Fatah Islamic Mosque and was attended by the governor of the capital government, Hisham bin Abdurrahman al Khalifa. Along with Hamad bin Abdul Aziz Al Saleh, members of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives, various officials, community leaders, citizens, and residents. The president of the SCIA has said that Bahrain is proud of hosting such events and affirmed the importance of the Holy Quran in uplifting the morals of society and in preserving its Islamic identity. The president said that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has always been keen on serving the Holy Quran and in supporting the the organizations that promote its memorization and reading. The president expressed congratulations to the winners of the competition and wished its organizers constant progress and success. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met with the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee, which was led by Council Representative Mohammed Sisi at the Council's headquarters today, where the Minister reviewed the highlights of Bahrain's participation in the United Nations General Assembly. The Minister also discussed Bahrain's position on a variety of issues and exchanged opinions on the latest developments in the region. During the meeting, the Minister expressed appreciation for the Committee's efforts as well as the efforts of the Legislative Authority in general for maintaining Bahrain's good relations with the world's countries on all levels. The minister affirmed the ministry's keenness on supporting efforts that reinforce cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities. For his part, the council representative uh, Mohammed Al Buainin praised uh, the minister's role in reinforcing Bahrain's relations with the world's countries based on mutual respect and cooperation measures in the service of the people of the world. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and Cooperations with This is Bahrain held a ceremony in honor of the UK Prime Minister Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief, Rahman Christi, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain for the first time since taking up his new position. The ceremony was attended by the Assistant of the Foreign Affairs, Mr. Abdullah Dossiri, Bahrain Ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Deputy President of the Supreme Council for the Environment and Brief, President Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, members of the representatives and Shura councils, and scores of diplomatic, social, and religious figures. The attendees affirm the historic relations between Bahrain and the UK, which are becoming stronger in all fields of joint coordination and cooperation, stressing the availability of many opportunities and commonalities between the two sides to increase efforts to spread religious freedom and peaceful coexistence in various world areas. And the reason I've just come to Bahrain is because Bahrain has a centuries-old tradition of mutual coexistence between different faiths. You know, I went to the Hindu temple, which has been here for 200 years. You know, I went to the uh, meet uh, with members from the local uh, church, and the church was built in 1893. And so I've had the vicar from my constituency, Reverend Chris Butt, 
was the vicar at the cathedral at Sir Christopher's. So I have individuals from my constituency who have come to Bahrain, who've been able to lead on religious worship and religious freedom. And on that basis, when answering your question, what do I see? I see a country which has a strong track record and is an example to countries around the world on mutual coexistence of individuals from all faiths and none. I would say the first step to mutual coexistence is about accepting one another. It's about ensuring that each and every one of us you know, uh, respects another's faith. And looking at the Bahrain Declaration by His Majesty and the five points on that are an example of what individuals, you know, by, by taking individual responsibility, by practicing their faith and accepting one another can do to ensure that you know, our world is a better place as good human beings. UK Prime Minister Special Envoy has paid a visit to religious sites across the kingdom, including mosques, martyrs and churches, as well as the Hindu temple of Srinatij in Banama, which is considered one of the oldest in the history of the region. He also visited Tawali to see the work site of building the largest Catholic church in the region. He affirmed that Bahrain is one of the top countries when it comes to achieving the values of tolerance and coexistence. He also expressed pride in his visit and stressed that the Bahraini model shows the world that terrorism has nothing to do with Muslims and that Bahrain under a Muslim and Arab leader seeks to spread the values of peace and coexistence. UK Prime Minister Special Envoy affirmed that Bahrain's history in spreading peace and coexistence among religions is a model that should be followed on the international level and that Bahrain exerts all of its efforts to achieve this noble goal under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs strongly condemns the military attack carried out by Turkey on areas in the northeast of Syria, which is a violation of the rules of international law and an attack on the territorial sovereignty and unity of Syria. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs support said the invitation for an emergency meeting of the Arab League to take a unified Arab stance towards this aggression. The ministry calls on the Security Council to take its responsibilities of confronting this attack in order to maintain peace and security and to provide a supportive atmosphere to continue efforts aimed at finding a peaceful solution in Syria based on the principles of the Geneva Declaration and Security Council Resolution 2254 in a matter or in a manner that preserves Syria's sovereignty and unity.